everyone, welcome back to our channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So today we're doing another interview, another Latina business owner, Sylvia. So we're here in Salinas at Crush Consignment. So can you tell us a little bit about what Crush Consignment is? Sure, um, Crush Consignment is a consignment store here in Salinas where we take in items from women who maybe they don't use them anymore, um, dresses, pants, handbags, shoes, and um, they want to recycle them mm -hmm. and not necessarily fill our landfill or maybe donate it to something they're not comfortable with. Yeah. So they'll bring them in and we resell them. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a beautiful store, guys. I'm like looking around and I'm like, I'm gonna go shopping after we film. For the store, so tell us the origins of this store. Well, um, basically, I can remember a few years ago where my friends and I we would get together and we would sort of have like, I'm sure you've heard of it before, exchange parties. Oh yeah, we like would, swap parties. Right. We would bring um, stuff that we maybe wore one or two times to a party. Everyone in our little circle has already seen us in that outfit. Yeah. So we would bring them to usually my house mm -hmm. and swap them out. So I pick your red sweater, you pick my black shoes. And that's kind of how it worked. And then I noticed there was a bunch of stuff left over. Yeah. And really nice stuff. We didn't know what to do with it. So I sent a message out on Facebook that said, hey, I think I'm going to open up a consignment store. Um, is anyone interested in consigning their items? And sure enough, um, I had a rack in my living room. And by the <laughs> It, this was in February, and by the end of February, it was filled. Wow. Of this year? Of 2012. Okay. I was just <laughs> like, wow. Like, <laughs> by, so during that time, when did you actually open up the store? I opened up in June of 2012. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So it was, like, really fast. Yes. I didn't apply for a license. I, did, I didn't know what I was going to do. It really was an idea that I had. Yeah. That I just said it on Facebook. And, and you're just like, okay, we're going to run with this. <laughs> we did. We had to run with it. Yeah. yeah. So before the store, what were you doing? Before the store, my husband and I opened up a produce company. And okay. so he worked in produce mm -hmm. and I helped him in any way that I could. Um, yeah. I'm a natural born salesperson. Yeah. So I love sales and... Um, the funniest thing is when I told him about this idea, he said to me, so you're going to have a garage sale every day? That's one way of putting it. If you think about it, it's like a really nice garage sale. A super nice garage yeah. sale. Yeah. So Sales skill set. But starting a business, there's so many things that come with it, like the permits and the paperwork and like the decor and making sure you have enough in stock of different size. So what were some of like the first lessons you learned when you opened up the store? Wow. Okay. The first lesson. <laughs> or some lessons yeah. I remember. Well, the first lesson that I learned was certainly, um, sometimes you have an idea and you are, um, in my case, very, um, uh, strong minded about that idea. <laughs> yeah. That's the nicest way I can put it. And I really had a focus on, um, I only wanted a couture store. So I only wanted to carry um, really upscale brands. Yeah. And I was really focused on that idea. And um, I thought that's, that's where I was headed. That was like you're gonna be your niche. That was. Um, and then I slowly realized that um, there's a lot of women who want to invest in a really nice piece every once in a while. But there's more women that want to invest in some fun pieces yeah. that don't break the bank exactly. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so that definitely changed my whole business plan. And so that was the biggest lesson I learned, not to be so bullheaded. 
<laughs> yeah. And I think a lesson that a lot of entrepreneurs learn is you have this vision, but it's also realizing who your customers are. Yes. And then realizing, okay, I got to sort of change my messaging for those customers. Right. Like, I see a lot of different pieces. Yeah. So, and I'm always curious with consignment stores, because every consignment store is going to be a little bit different, mm -hmm. is how do you select what's going to be in the store and what's not going to be in the store? Well, I select pieces that I would wear. Okay. <laughs> Super Make it really easy. easy. Yeah. yeah. I love color. I love vibrancy. I love all black. Mm -hmm. I love to, you know, channel my inner Johnny Cash. Yeah. I, there's so many things that I, like I love. I like how that's your, your passion. <laughs> Where your passion went. It's like Johnny Cash. I love it. Yeah. There's, there's so much that I love about fashion. The thing about fashion is we need to express ourselves, And we yeah. express ourselves differently every day. Oh, yeah. Every day when I look at my closet, I'm always thinking, I'm like, who do I want to be today? And today I want to be like in white, I'm trying to be an angelic, you know? But the other day I was like, it's going to be all black, you know? Johnny so, Cash. Yeah. Because <laughs> some days you're just like, I want a leather jacket, leggings, and mm -hmm. boots, and just go for it. Yep. Kind of day. And then the other days you're like, I want to be in a yellow whimsical dress. I love that too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So what has been some like fashion trends that you're just like really shocked about or really excited about that you keep seeing people like, okay, people really like this and people want this. Oh, let's see. My favorite fashion trend right now is ponchos. <laughs> oh. oh my God. <laughs> Every time I, we get them in and I see them on people, they look great on everybody. Yeah. The best thing I heard was a customer came in tried on a poncho, had a fabulous hat on, and she walked out of the dressing room and said, I feel like I just walked out of a Clint Eastwood movie. I look great. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> so that's my favorite trend. Um, what, in, I guess mainly in Salinas, what I see is, oh, uh, all dresses with pockets. <sighs> Everyone loves that, and Everyone I love does. that too. I wear dresses all the time. Mm-hmm. Like very rarely where I wear pants, but it's so difficult to find dresses with pockets. And when I do find one, I'm like, I'm going to make this fit. I don't care. I will get this tailored in or out because I really need th these pockets. And so, yeah. I don't know why all dresses don't come with pockets. I, know, I have this debate all the time with my <laughs> husband because like when we go out, like sometimes he has to hold my stuff in his pockets. Like if it's, if the purse doesn't match the dress, of okay. course. And so... He's just like, are you serious? I'm like, this is society. Okay, this is society's problem. This is not my problem. So you have to hold my stuff. <laughs> There's like a whole um, article that I read recently about why why don't all women's clothing have pockets? Yeah. I don't know. Oh my God, I have to read that article. <laughs> There's an idea. <laughs> yeah, there's an idea. Like event, a whole clothing line for women. Everything. That has pockets. And pockets actually fit stuff, not like the little tube <laughs> of like lipstick, you know, like things that <laughs> fit. Six year, what is something that you're just really proud of in your six year? I'm proud that I'm still here. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I mean, I've seen so many wonderful businesses come and go. Mm -hmm. um, it's taxing. There's uh, moments where you think, oh boy, am I, is this my calling? Am I doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. And do people still like this idea? But the wonderful thing is, as women, we love to shop. Yes. <laughs> no matter what the economy is. Oh yeah. We love to shop. Mm -hmm. And it just makes you feel good. And that's what we try and portray here at Crush is mm -hmm. we want you to come in, we want you to look around, maybe get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. And um, feel good. Oh, yeah. I like that. And there are a lot of pieces here that would get you out of your comfort zone. I can sort of see yeah. the thing behind you. I want, I don't know if it's in my size, but I love it because it's very like, it gives me 60, 70 vibes. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And it's right, and then there was like this like really formal dress I saw <laughs> next to it, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> So fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Yes, we are. Not 
a lot of people I don't think outside of California so I know I have some readers in Houston New York so Salinas is about two hours south of San Francisco give and take depending on traffic <laughs> so but Salinas is I didn't realize it's growing it has this very vibrant old downtown area what do you love about being in Salinas where it's, it is a this small town feel but there's a lot going on here just even walking around these few blocks because I parked a little far um, there was like a lot of cute little restaurants and like shops okay this is so awesome that you asked me that question because yeah. our block here on Gabalan mm -hmm. in beautiful Salinas um, we're all women business owners Every single one of us. Are you serious? Yes, every single one of us. I did not know that. So, what is so unique for me is a lot of us have children. A lot of us are married. A lot of us have all these other extra things that mm -hmm. we're going through or um, dealing with. Um, a lot of us have children in college. Some of us have little babies. And so we're constantly um, uplifting one another. Mm -hmm. And when you know, we're having a particularly hard day or a slow day, um, one of the girls will come over and just uplift us. And yeah. it's really nice. We we call ourselves the Gabalin Girls. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and honestly, we invite your readers to come downtown and experience kind of small town America a little bit. You know, there, is. there isn't a, there is no big box stores around here. Um, and it's so it's all little mom and pop places and that's yeah. really nice and it's so pretty and it's beautifully like sunny outside right now so <laughs> it just it just looks it's really yeah. pretty with the store being a business owner you're also married and you have kids as well I do so how do you the million question that people go to TED talks for all the time is how do you balance it all because like this is your story you have two employees yeah. mm -hmm. but still it's like it's your baby. It's like almost your third child because you have two kids. I have three. Three. It's your fourth child. Yes. You know, <laughs> so it's like, how do you balance being the mom, being a wife, being active in community, having a personal life, and then also running the store? Good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, how I balance it all is, if it's something that I want, I'm gonna make it happen. Yeah. Um. And if it's something that I don't, I'll just make excuses yeah. for it, you know? And balance to me is always being able to do your best job in mm -hmm. all areas. So sometimes your balance is a little off yeah, because you're spending a little more time with your child or you're spending a little more time in your home or, you know, it it all works out. We just have to let it come to us. We yeah. can't, um, for, I'm learning. I can't force my way through things. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a good way of putting it. Can't force your way. Cause yeah. I'm one, one tip I learned was always, it's about priorities, not mm -hmm. balance. Some days you have to give time to like your relationship, but the other days you have to give time to your business. It's exactly, it's sort of like you, every day is a little bit different. So for, up and coming business owners, especially young women and women of color, what would be some like tips or advice that you would give them? Find a need and fill it. There you go. Yeah. I like that. It's like, <laughs> cause some of the best businesses are just like that. You, you don't think of like, Oh, that was a problem. Where you're like, no, that was a problem in my life. Yeah. Right. And don't be afraid. Yeah. If you fail, dust yourself off. Yeah. And Try something else. Um, I think there needs to be more of us, mm -hmm. more of us um, taking a chance and um, kind of building a community in which we can teach our daughters that, you know, you have that million dollar idea. You can make it happen um, and act on it. Don't be afraid. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Fear just sets myself back all the time because I think, what if right and it's you have to like fight through that like all the time and I think as an entrepreneur sometimes people forget is as an entrepreneur you have to fight through that like every day on your, <laughs> by yourself because there are days where I'm like I don't know how you feel with a store but like at least with the magazine there's like always content but there are days where you're just like I don't want to do this right, right. now right. but or, it's like I have to you know 
Yeah, or you sometimes, which is the worst, is you doubt yourself. Oh, yeah. And um, so what if you screw up? So what if you made a bad decision? You can turn that around and, and make it right. Mm-hmm. So I my advice for all you young girls out there, just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Be like Nike. Just yeah. do it. <laughs> so, all right. So thank you so much for jo- for joining us today. Yeah. Any final like shout outs? Do you have any upcoming events or how can they anything coming up in the new year? Uh you'll want to shop with Crush in January. It's our biggest sale. It's really fun. There's mm-hmm. lots of giveaways and follow us on Instagram. Yes. All her social media will be below and all the the sale that's going on, all the info again will also be below. Awesome. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Merry oh, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas everyone. Merry Christmas.